ago when I was looking at the data on percutaneous tubal nerve stimulation, there was a lot of small studies um, from different countries, Canada, Europe, United States. And when I first was reading them, I said, you know, it looks like it works. It looks like it's very low and you know, it's very well tolerated. I thought it was interesting that there was no negative outliers. The data, it just always looked the same. It looked similar. Dr. Ken Peters, good friend of mine, he and I started doing a lot of research in it and we did what was called the ORBIT study. And that it basically was percutaneous tibial nerve stimulation versus tolteridine. And basically it worked just as well, but was better tolerated because there wasn't any muscarinic side effects. Thanks to Ken, who's a lot smarter than I, you know, he, he validated a sham. And so there was a sham study for PTNS. And at 12 weeks, I mean, it's really, I think what, how it got its Medicare number, et cetera, and third party payers coverage was the data was so robust to show that this worked versus sham. Um, it wasn't placebo effect. There's a number of long-term studies, one-year data, three-year data, and it basically says once this works to whatever degree it's gonna work at 12 weeks, to maintain that benefit, it's about one treatment a month. That sort of tends to maintain the benefit. And you know, looking back over the years now, the data does sort of still mirror what we deliver in our practice, and the results may be better than the data. I mean, most patients do respond quite well to this. I think what's important to realize is that, yes, they may be a partial responder and they may still be leaking, for instance, let's say they're 60% better, but it may be their only treatment. And 60% better, for, for as an example, is a lot better than going home leaking.